14 November 1952, Carnegie, New York. Hamad Jamal, Dizzy Gillespie, Duke Clinton, Billy Holiday, Charlie Parker, Stan Getz. And you know what? What he told me, Ahmad? He told me, say, do. Do what you have to do now, because they're all dead. I'm the only one alive. So do what you have to do now. And please, give me the best. Some theater are more for lyrics, opera, and when you put the sound system inside, just like that, it doesn't sound like we want to sound. For most of these buildings, there's a lot of concrete, and it bounces around and causes reverberation. You're just fighting a battle at that point, and a lot of engineers, especially young ones, tend to just, you know, let's hit the gas pedal and see if we can get above this. And that, at that point, you're just hurting people's ears, and you're making them uncomfortable. We produce so many shows uh, around the world, and uh, I cannot tell you exactly how many, but uh, a lot. I've been a touring sound engineer on the low end of 250 days a year, and on the high end, I've done just over 300. Every show is a new location. Every show, we change location, we change the room, we big area, small area, theater. We consider Bose for a long time. Ahmad is a big fan of Bose. I knew Bose, but I didn't know anything about the system room match. Not that Bose is like some new upstart, but this is this is a different this is a different thing. And we're in the audio community, we're real picky. Engineer, the sound man, they if they don't know the projects, they are like, ah, uh, you know, are you sure? But I'm responsible for the show. I was curious to, to hear the Bose system in, in this case. It was the first time I heard really in every place of the Barbican Center a good sound, Preci precision, really. Everywhere in this theater, you can feel every, every, everything. You are on a stage with, with the artist. After we did London, it was bigger area. We use it in a theater, small, not small, but medium theater. So I think it can work in many, many places, no problem. You're trying to focus it off the elements. You don't want it to hit the walls, you don't want it to hit the ceiling. You want it to hit the people that want to hear it and nowhere else. So you're not creating reverb or any sort of reflections in the room. That just caused problems. And that's when Bose really came to the table for me. At the end of a Yukon show where we're doing ACDC's Highway to Hell and you've got 30 people on stage, it needs to be bigger than life. It was in the pocket, right, right from the downbeat. As soon as you hit that mute button and the band hit, it was like, wow. You get to shut off the technical part of your brain and just work with the artistic part of your brain at this point. Okay, let's mix. I realized how the sound system of Bose at the Olympia was great. Not only me, but a lot of professionals that we invite. They were amazed. They'd all stand out front just, what is this? And we're like, it's, it's Bose. And they're like, wow. At the end, they have all the smiles. And they look at me and they say, everywhere where we were, I'm and we play. We have to put balls, of course, because we are frustrated now without balls. You think different, you get a big outcome, and a really good big outcome. And I, that's kind of what, what happened.